So what was it like working on their record Invisible Lantern a few years later when they were getting more attention? It was good. It was wonderful that the Screaming Trees were being heard. The Screaming Trees had gone from being fans of that musical environment to being contemporaries in that musical That's environment. Cool. And they got to Seattle and were celebrated in Seattle. People love the Screaming Trees in Seattle. So the game was on by Invisible Lantern. I think there's two other versions of the record. Really? A lot got recorded, yeah. Um, Van did a couple of songs where he wrote them and sang them. Yeah. If Yeah. And he's great. And was there, there was some weird stuff. There's a whole song we did with them out on the street in front of the studio in the middle of the night. Really? Yeah. And I've never done anything like this with anybody ever. And they drove it. I wasn't telling them what to do. This was just something they wanted to do. And so uh, imagine, okay, here's the train station. And here's the train track. Here's the recording studio. Here's the cool little park with it, with an old caboose in it. And then here's the track that leads out to uh, the cannery, right? So if we're looking at it, it's overhead, right? There's a little field next to the studio. Lanigan's there on an SM58. Okay. Tons of mic cable, right? Lee is across the street at the park playing an acoustic guitar. Pickerel's a little further down the, the way towards town. And he's got a two by four. And okay. so he's playing a rhythm. Okay. And it's bouncing off the train station and bouncing back. So it's actually making a, a rhythmic echo. So Mark's got this kind of hand jive going with a two by four on the on the on the brick. And then Van, Van is, is way down here playing a trumpet. <laughs> because there's trumpet players all through the Connor family. Everybody rocks on the trumpet. Van's back there doing some kind of Italian Morricone baleful trumpet part and Lanigan was singing kind of in the bushes in the dark and <laughs> <That's> so cool <laughs> it's on a cassette someplace somebody's got it somewhere i forget what it was called and i think they they redid the song as a real song and that might have got released but i i can't even remember what fucking song it was That's hilarious so i mean how would you set up the mics for that Everyone nobody did that in seattle nobody did that in seattle and then the only real mic was Lanigan. so everybody else i had uh what i had um Neumann KM84, which is a, a beautiful uh, condenser microphone, maybe not the best thing for this job, but I, and the studio was upstairs, right? So yeah, I ran a cable down the stairs of the studio and put the most expensive mic in the studio out on the street where somebody could have stolen it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was picking up all of the action on the street. And then Mark Lanigan had a at an SM58, uh, also on a, another long string of cables, also going down this other stairway to the studio. So probably, yeah, probably about 300, 400 feet of my cable all in all. Wow. I, I guess, I mean, forget stealing. It's, it's lucky no one tripped over that thing and, like, disconnected you guys uh, while you are Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, it was in dark. It was in the summer. You kind of had that neighborhood to yourself back then. If the cannery wasn't going, no one was down there, you know. That's hilarious. So, I mean, uh, when you, I guess, were playing that back in the studio, what did you think of the sound of it? I thought it was beautiful. I was, I'm from Evergreen, man. You know, we, we we do weird shit, you know. So I just I thought this was remarkably arty, and I was proud of them for being so, uh, so creative. And by the way, while we're talking about that street yep. and that train station, strange out here, uh, which is the vaguely Morrison kind of thing on side two of, of clairvoyance. Okay. Uh, there's a spoken word section about the blood runs thick down third street and takes the train over the mountain. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the street. That's cool. And I wrote that. Really? Yes. We were working on the vocals <laughs> and, uh, I, forget, I had some version of that in my head from some other party or something like that. Huh. It says, okay, Mark, this is what I think you should do. You know, write this down, you know. And, That's <laughs> actually really, really cool. Yeah, it's like, in this city. <laughs> Mark just did it perfectly. You know? yeah. So, yeah, Strange Out Here was a complete hoot to record. 